All right, so for those of you that don't know who this is, Meg and Chris came up to the shop to build out this transit. They rented the shop for about 24 days and did all kinds of work. I'm gonna link that video above, but Chris and Meg are done, and we're gonna give you guys an updated look at everything that they've got done. They've got some amazing features, and we're gonna show you. All right, so we made a few different uh, improvements after we left the shop. We had a few things that weren't quite done yet. So one of the things that I built is this pull-out table. I saw a guy on YouTube who, who did something like this, and I thought, oh, I can do that. So it's got a piano hinge here that holds it to the kitchen cabinet. And then, so when you stop and you want to eat something, you can just come out and just set your chairs up and have a nice meal or some coffee or something. And then when you're finished and you're ready to get going, you just pull it up like this. It's got a window sash lock here that goes down. And then I have some little monkey magnets on it here that hold the two doors, which are on also on piano hinges. And then we just close them up like that. And then you're ready to roll. So cool. Yeah. And then uh, we didn't put a built-in stove because I'm sure you didn't, if you watched the first video, you didn't see a stove. You may have been wondering, well, what, are they going to have a stove or not? Well, yeah, we got a stove. This is a Jet Boil Genesis stove, which folds up nice and compact like this and stores in the big drawer when we're not using it. And then when you're ready to use it, you just put it on the countertop and you just fold it out. And then we have a gas can here, uh, propane gas. Uh, it's made by a company called Ignic or something or other. So it's inside of this cover here and then you got your propane tank and you got the hose and everything that hooks up to it so we just hook this hose up to this jet boil and then we're ready to cook some food we've been using it but unfortunately we're out of gas now <laughs> it holds a gallon and a half so we got to get some more gas in it no no did that come with that no no this came separate okay yeah okay ignite gas you have to buy that separate perfect yeah. and that one takes the little green ones as well yes you can also put green uh, propane tanks on it okay. if you want to that's but neat this is kind of a little more economically uh, and environmentally friendly because you know you don't have to be disposing of green exactly. gas cans and you can get it refilled at a propane fill up place exactly yeah and another thing that we added on was this flip up table that really extends the counter space a lot so this is just simply a bamboo cutting board that we got from amazon and then the brackets down underneath are little shelf brackets that we got from Amazon also. So it's very easy to use. You just flip it up when you need it. And then there's two little buttons underneath here. You can push them and it goes right back down again. Now, um, you know, like a butcher block, you have to treat. Do you have to treat bamboo? I think occasionally you should probably put some oil or something on it, okay. you know, just to keep it from getting too dry. You gotcha. know, just like any type of wood that you'd have to do. If you watched the last video, you saw they were just kind of open spaces. And so now we have the cover, and I'm going to do this carefully because we've been driving and want to make sure stuff doesn't Stop. fall out. It's van <laughs> life. Something's goes. coming out. Yep. It's like Fibber McGee's closet. Oh, that turned out so nice. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, even though I have some little lips built on here to kind of keep the stuff from falling out, we still get a little bit of fallout when we go down a bumpy road like this Palm Canyon what road. What a great use of that space, though. Yeah, it works out great. Nice to keep the vitamins and all that sort of thing in there. And then we added on these doors and uh, we were at the RTR show uh, when they had their open house show. So we showed this and everybody when they came in the door, it's like, oh, the doors are so beautiful. <laughs> so anyway, um, these were basically uh, molding that I got from Lowe's hardware store that had the design etched in it, but that wasn't colored. And so I got some Posca paint pins and then I just painted in all the etchings and just made it to where it looked colorful. So it turned out real nice, I think. So the upper part is our pantry. And so you can see, can hold quite a bit of stuff. We got most of the canned goods down here and then dry goods up, up above there. So you can hold quite a bit of food in there. And then below is the wardrobe, the hanging wardrobe. So I have my clothes, tuck that in. Cool. <laughs> I have my clothes hanging there in a hanging clothing bag and it fits just right. So I think nice. it's 36 inch tall and about 17 inch wide. And that's just the right size for the hanging clothing bag. So I think that worked out real well. And then we got the drawer fronts on the drawers. 
and I put monkey magnets on the drawers and that helps to hold them closed but still if we're traveling traveling down a bumpy road we have to kind of put um, bungee cords on there to keep them from opening up so that it works yep and then our big drawer down below here that's uh, if you watch the first video we said we're going to put pots and pans in it so we did put pots and pans in it but the problem we had with it it was so heavy that every time we turned left the drawer slid out even though i tried putting some magnets on it they just weren't holding it well enough so what i did instead is i basically made this hitch pin i drilled through the cabinet and the drawer behind it and you just pull the hitch pin out when you want to open the drawer and then when you want to close it close it back up push the hitch pin in and now it doesn't go anywhere nice so that holds it good and steady That's a good idea all right so you might wonder well where, where do you sit and eat food you don't see any table sitting in here right well both the front seats swivel and then I made this table for the lagoon mount out of half inch birch plywood and I actually copied a guy's design from Etsy but he wanted $300 for his and I figured well I can make it for less than $50 so basically we just put it on the lagoon mount and then it can swivel around I'm sure you've seen lagoon mounts before so it can swivel around it can be small like that if you're just sitting and you're reading or playing on your iPad or whatever and then when you're ready for dinner come out and you fold it out like that and then you got a nice pretty big pretty good size table there so 24 by 30 that's nice yeah that's good size and these are like 180 degree solid brass hinges um, and so they allow it to fold flat more or less and then also fold back in and then I am going to put some extenders underneath here for both sides just so that it not too much pressure is put onto the onto the hinges like when we have food and stuff on there. yeah yeah and then when you're done with it just fold it back up and there we go <gasps> that is nice and then it lives back up on top of the cabinets there good job Meg that is <laughs> nice 300 bucks you saved yeah really because that was expensive if you bought it from the guy on Etsy Man. but you know he made a nice design and I'm sure he sold in fact it said that they sold a lot of them on there but I was just like I can make that for under 50 bucks I'm sure yep <laughs> yep now you guys didn't have your bed in here no we didn't when I'll I did the tour the way, that so. turned out nice yeah it turned out real nice yeah and, you know, instead of drilling holes in the plywood, like a lot of people do to inhibit mold, uh -huh. if you just lift up that, that sheet a little bit at the bottom, you'll see that there's a kind of a rigid um, material. Oh yeah, what is that? That is called hypervent. And apparently a lot of people use it because it provides air circulation underneath your mattress. And that way you don't have to drill holes and all that sort of thing. It's Hypervent? I believe it was Hypervent was the company. Oh, you know what? We'll try and drop a link on that yeah. when we will find it. Yeah. How are you liking your spice rack? Oh, I love the spice rack. <laughs> I use it every <laughs> single time I cook. Oh, it, it, you know, when you're first getting started, labeling them, that was a good idea. Yeah, yeah, Chris did that. She has like a little label machine, so she made labels for the top of them. Oh, and I got her that for Christmas. So you guys have your cabinet at the foot of the bed. Mm -hmm. you, and this is a nice, this is a nice distance. You ever have any problems? You ever, you ever have any problems with that cabinet being no, your feet under? No, not, yeah, even, that's, not even with the dog sleeping down there. The do that's the doggy's bed over there. That's right. That's nice. So anyway, another thing that we did, um, before we even came out to Johnny's shop, Chris and I installed this shelf up here. It was like a pre-made shelf. I don't remember what company, yeah. but it comes with a curtain rod on the back of it. So we got this shower curtain that has a beautiful design on it. You can see the Arizona desert. And we cut it because it was too long for in here. And then the piece we cut off of it, we made into that curtain, which is oh, up above nice. uh, where we have the toiletry items. So that's basically got stuff like toilet paper and stuff oh, like nice. that. So that sits in there. But uh, shower curtains, as you know, are very thin. So what we did, we went to Joanne's Sewing and we got this insulating material that's three layers. It's got foil in the middle and then some kind of batting and stuff on both sides. 
And uh, I'm not much of a seamstress, but I do have a sewing machine, so I got it out and had to watch a video again on how to use it. <laughs> it looks good. So is that like a quilt backing? Or? Yeah, it's kind of a quilt backing. Some, it's it's nice. insulation. So when we put this across at night, um, we've got a separation between the cab and the back area, and it keeps it nice and toasty warm in here. Yeah. Yeah, so that works really well. And we like that. And of course, we can put the window coverings and stuff up above on the shelf up there. Oh, and this tie, tie rod that I have here, or tie, tie strap, is actually made also from the bottom That's of the That's what curtain. it looks like. <laughs> so we had a little left over, so I said, well, you know, we can make a tie strap out of it. So we made a tie strap, and it matches the bottom of the curtain. So that's where it came from. There you go. Yep. Using it all. Yep. Just like the Native Americans, you know, they used every part of the buffalo. <laughs> we used every part of the curtain. <laughs> all right, so everybody's going to want to know, since you've got it built out, you've been out in it, have you guys found anything that you, you know, you just, it's not working for you, you think you might have to change it? What do mm -hmm. you think? Um, I can't think of a whole lot of things. Uh, one thing is on this lagoon table mount, this lever is on the wrong side. So we really need the lever to be on the opposite side so we can move the table more out of the way. But I've been told that you can just take a hammer and just kind of uh, put the uh, carriage bolt in there. It has a square back that fits into the square thing here, but there's not mm -hmm. a square opening on the other side, but you can take a hammer and put that carriage bolt in there and yeah. like hammer it a little bit and it'll make it square. And then we can move the lever over to the opposite side. So I'm going to do that when I get home because I don't want to have to deal with it out here in the desert. But the other thing that we had a little bit of trouble with is when we were out at Johnny's, we had a 2000 watt inverter, which she hooked up for us. But there really wasn't much of a space. There was no place we could really mount it. And we had to wait till we got home. And once we got home, we realized um, there's still no place we can mount it. And so basically we went back online and found a smaller inverter from Renergy and hooked it up ourselves. Um, but we didn't realize until we got out here and all of a sudden I smelled a burning smell. And I was like, what's, what's that burning smell? It smells like something electrical burning. You mm -hmm. don't want to smell that in a van. <laughs> and so I was touching, you know, the, the inverter and it didn't feel hot. And then we stopped. And Chris reached back and touched the wires, and they were too hot to touch. And so I was like, don't use wow. the inverter. We don't need to start a fire in here. And so so fortunately, Johnny was out here uh, at her camp, and we went out there. And uh, she took a look at it, and apparently the washers, we had gotten the washer in the wrong spot. So you don't want the washer between your post and, and the other thing, the <laughs> whatever wire. it is, yes. the wire. And so anyway, so she rearranged it for us. and and got it fixed up and now we've been using it and we haven't had any problem at all. So thank you, Johnny, you <laughs> saved us. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you a quick explanation of what was going on because we don't want you guys out there on the road with possibly the same problem. Meg and Chris reached out to me. They said they smelt some burning wires. We kind of talked about it on the phone and I said, don't touch anything. Let me look at it first. We were casually talking and Chris mentioned that she felt like one of the wires was coming loose. As soon as she said that, I was like, I, that's, that's where we're going to find our problem at. So I took the inverter off of where they had it mounted at. And when I took the wire that goes to the battery off, there was the... Um, the bolt and then the uh, where they connected at. Then they had um, a flat washer, a lock washer, then that battery cable, and then a nut. So you want to make sure that you've got your wire on the same side as the bolt going into that lug because that tightens down. Once that tightens down, it's tight. You put your flat washer on, your lock washer on, and your nut on just for added so that if you have a failure you've got a backup so that's that's what we did and so on the road and you guys you guys love that inverter setup don't you oh the inverter is great i'm so glad we have it because like we have this propane stove that i showed you a little bit earlier but the problem is we ran out of propane so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then we didn't have anything to cook food but we do have like a little um rice cooker kind of a thing 
that only uses 600 watts and that inverter is 700 watts. So if we turn the engine on and we plus plug the rice cooker into the inverter, we just cooked some rice just a little bit ago in it. So, so we're able to do that even without using our house battery because basically, basically coming off the car battery and without using the propane. So right. we can still cook, which is good. And the inverter also charges the EcoFlow Delta Pro which is in the back when we're driving and stuff. So so it's a godsend, I'll tell you. There you I'm go. glad Johnny recommended that because I was thinking of doing it a different way and we couldn't have done that if, we, if we'd done it the way I thought. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, Van here don't care. We got that going on here. So, so Meg, thanks for giving us the update. You have done, I'm telling you, you have done phenomenal in here. You guys both, it looks amazing. I'm loving it, loving it. Thank you so much for cooking rice for Maddie. That's for Maddie. <laughs> Poor Maddie is not feeling well out here in Quartzsite. And guys, thanks for following along. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.